Okay? So, this is what I also uh, find out, okay? There's a young lady. Her name is uh, something Jenkins. She, I'm just going to show you a little bit because she, she never invoked um, Tiffany's name. But she was swept up with this, uh, the year of bride. So she also believed that she was going to get married. But that never happened. But credit to her, she uh, came out and repented and denounced uh, that particular, you know, whatever she was doing. She ended up deleting uh, her videos because she wanted to maintain her ministry in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. I thought that was... Um, that was a beautiful thing that she did. Because remember, like, if you have an influence, the things that you're doing, it's going to affect people one way or the other. One way or the other. Okay? So, and, yeah. So, let's uh, listen uh, a little bit of what she said over here. And then we'll get back to uh, Tiffany. Okay? Here we go. I'm really believing that I'm hearing from God, not knowing that I'm hearing from a deceptive spirit that is from my bloodline connected to marriage. Connected to marriage in my bloodline has opened a door for me to be deceived regarding marriage. Regarding marriage. <sighs> regarding marriage. And so um, when the prophecy was not fulfilled and, and there was, y'all, if I could walk y'all through, there was like a mil, I saw, I believe that I saw a million confirmations, even though I was unsettled, even though there was, you know, still a bunch of red flags, even though in December of 2023, when it, it didn't happen, I put that video, I should have been like, all right, sis, come on, I know the Lord can do a work in two, he can do a work in two months, but let's just let it go. But um, even though I, you know, had, saw all the, now I see all the red flags, of course, you know, I'm on the other side, we're in light, so I can see all of the darkness. But now that I'm able to see all of the red flags, there still were some confirmations that were making me think, oh, because of this, this is right. Oh, because of this, this is right. Because of this, this is right. So there were a bunch of confirmations that I was attributing to, to that word of marriage and marriage with that person. And I was putting it to that word and it was not right. It was not right. You see, that's what happens. Because every time, like God has already spoken in the word. So every time you're looking for something new, you're going to find yourself just grasping. Oh, does this mean this? Does this mean this? Does this mean this? Right? You are never going to be settled. But if you're just holding on to the word of God, which does not change because God is the same yesterday, today and forevermore, you are going to be fine because your reference point will always be constant, will always be the same. So, uh, you know, she was also swept up into this issue of, you know, believing marriage, this, that, and the third, and it never materialized for her. Okay, it's 2024, she's still not married. Uh, according to everything that she did believe, she was going to get married in 2023. But she did, uh, she came out, she did a video apologizing and repenting and just acknowledging that whatever else she said, it was from the Lord. It was not from God. It was not from God. It was, uh, it was very deceptive. So these are the things that are going to take place because, you know, uh, some people are going to say things that looks uh, real, okay? We, we, don't, we, we don't have to, to take the word for it, okay? So this is what the scripture teaches, okay? Deuteronomy uh, 13.1, okay? If a prophet or a dream of dreams arise among you and gives you a sign of wonder, and the sign of wonder that he tells you comes to pass. And if he says, let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us save them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet of that dream of dreams, you shall put to death because he has taught rebellion against the Lord of your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of slavery to make you live the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. Purge the evil among you. So even the scriptures, he actually telling like, eh, even if it sounds good and it happens, you should be careful. Where is that coming from? You see what I'm saying?
You should be very careful. So they might say some good things. They might say things that might actually happen. But, you know, when you look at their life, you look at the fruit of their ministry, you look at the things that they're doing, they are contradicting the scripture here and there, here and there. That is not of the Lord. That is not of the Lord. So those are the things that we have to be very, very careful for. Okay. So um, let's uh, carry on. We have... Uh, I mean, there's people who are coming out left and right, okay? So, Tiffany is clapping back, okay? For sure she is, <laughs> in her own way, okay? Now is telling people that, warning people who are calling her that she's a false teacher, that uh, <laughs> we're going to be in trouble. So, here's Tiffany, okay? Here we go gonna be deaf like your idols you're gonna be mute like your idols and you're gonna be dumb like your idols and many of you who still cannot discern the difference between god's prophets and a false prophet have idolatry in your life and you are deaf dumb and blind just like the idol that you serve with that being said the bible lets us know in first john chapter 4 verse 1 beloved believe not every spirit but test every spirit to see whether it is from god or not because many false prophets have gone out in the land there is no way that you can hear a false prophet on this platform say this person is a false prophet and I am a real prophet and this person has not encouraged you to test every spirit. Any prophet from God will tell you to test the spirit and don't even believe them. With that being said, here's how I test the spirit. Number one, I ask God, is this a character flaw that this person is dealing with or does this person house a demonic spirit on the inside of them that has now gained the ability to talk through their eye gate, their nose gate, their ear gate, and their mouth gate? I do not judge this by myself because I'm flawed, but I do go to God and say, is this person just lack maturity in the body of Christ or does this person house a demon on the inside of them that's talking through them? The very next thing I do according to John 7, 24 is I judge according to righteous judgment and not according to appearance this means that this person may sound right look right taste right smell right touch right it mean it sounds it mean it even means that they might even be quoting scriptures the right way but that doesn't mean that they're from god this is why he says don't judge based off of what it looks like but i want you to judge according to righteous judgment which means come to me god i mean and go and ask me if this person is from me or not now it's going to be easier for you to do this if you have the gift of discerning of spirits which is a lot different from the gift of discernment the gift of discernment is your ability to tell the difference between right and wrong but the gift of discerning of spirits allows you to discern the spirit operating through a person there is no person on earth that should be able to tell you i'm a real prophet so you should listen to me and they do not tell you to discern or test their spirit now here's why you all should be very afraid to come against god's prophet on this platform or in anywhere in your life number one the bible says in proverbs 17 verse 13 I need you to write this down and read it in every single translation you can find. Proverbs 17 verse 13 says, whoever rewards evil for good, evil will never leave your house. This means that if God sent me, I know you don't like me. I know you don't like my delivery. That's fine. That's between you and God. But if God sent me and I have obeyed God to a T, if I release the word of the Lord to a T, if I rebuke the body of Christ to a T, if I've given the body chastening and admonition to a T, if I've come against false prophets, false apostles, false teachers to a T, exactly how God told me to say it, and I have done good to the body of Christ, I have done good to the kingdom of God, and you on this platform is rewarding the good that I've done with evil. The Bible promises you in Proverbs 17, 13, that evil will never leave your house. Every amen that you do in agreement to a false prophet that speaks against me on this platform, and God has not judged me as a false prophet god has not judged me as having a marine spirit god has not judged me of being a, according to the order of the kingdom of darkness and you have a mandate you have come into agreement with it you have spread the bad news of smearing my name this is the word of the lord you have come into agreement with any witch against my name evil will never leave your house according to proverbs 17 13. you have released divine judgment over your own house because of your amen and i need you to understand that the bible lets you know I will bless those that bless you, Tiffany. So this is uh, Tiffany threatening anybody who is calling her out that she is a false uh, prophet. Guys, with everything so far that we have shown, Tiffany with her own words and according to the scripture, there is, there's a contradiction there. Okay. Does she say things that are actually good sometimes? Yes, she does. Does she say things that are be like, okay, I see what you're saying. Well, yes. But the issue comes here. Anytime she says that God told her and we look at the scripture, it's not matching. She has spoken presumptuously. That's not the word of God. And we know God, by the way, for the record, she's not a prophetess. She can call herself as such, but she's not. Okay? But let's grant that she is. According to the scripture, prophetesses cannot lie. 
Whatever they're saying, it should always be true because they are speaking. They are speaking on behalf of God. They are God's messengers. It's as if God himself is speaking to you when a prophet speaks. So we've already demonstrated her. So now she's, you know, she's on this issue where by like, oh, people who are calling out these are false teachers. No, no, no. We, we, we just don't call people false teachers for just for the sake of it. Okay. We are showing you that it, according to what you said, it's not matching the scripture. So should we believe what Tiffany is saying or should we believe what the scripture is saying? And they have a tendency of putting themselves in the scripture, right? There is a way for you to read the scriptures. You just can't transport yourself like, oh, it's Esther. Therefore, I'm Esther. No, no, no. There was only one Queen Esther. <laughs> so, you know, and, you know, it's also kind of in a way like to threaten people, not to say anything about her. Like, no, everything, whatever we are saying, we're just saying the things that she has said to much about the scripture. Nothing about her, you know, you know, whatever she does in her personal life, whatever it is, we don't even know. It's none of our business, okay? But the things that she's put out publicly and the things that she said that God told her is what we are measuring her up for, okay? So this is what I said. If she's real, if, if Tiffany was sent by God, she's a true prophetess of God, then anybody who is speaking against Tiffany, you're speaking against God and God will deal with you. Okay, so we we will wait for that. That's it. That's all she can say. That's all she uh, uh, she can say she can do. But if she is out here pronouncing curses and judgment on people who are standing on the word of God, I would know. I wouldn't want to be her. I would not want to be her. And she even put out um I don't know what do you call they put out what APB calling out the entire body of Christ. Uh, Nigeria, Ghana, in the entire body of Christ, that we need all to come together and defend Tiffany against these false prophets. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we are here and with the popcorn just watching. <laughs> That's exactly what we're going to do. But let's continue to hear the warning, okay? That she's warning, okay? And this applies, you know, even people in the chat as well. She always, if you put a comment, this also applies to you. So let's uh, hear more from our prophetess, Tiffany Montgomery. And I will curse those that curse you. That means that if you spend time on this platform cursing me, God already let you know that a curse has already been released over your life. He said, touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. I know you all hate that scripture, but it doesn't stop the fact that I am anointed and it doesn't stop the fact that I'm God's prophet. And if you touch me with your mouth, because there is such thing as word curses, the Bible says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. There is a divine judgment that is released over you for doing it. With that being said, there is a woman on this platform that is literally telling you. Tiffany, you need to stop. Like what you're doing is very, very dangerous. So she just, you, you guys heard her. I don't even want to repeat it myself. Okay. She's been chosen. She's been called. So anybody who's speaking against her, you see, she just pronounced judgment on people. Just like that, with no fear, with no fear at all. I mean, like, th just how God's mercy is. Because you lie back in the day, like, that was it, you know? Like, God says, like, in the later times, God overlooked. God overlooks the times, not the sin. That's what it is, okay? In later times, God overlooked. So this is exactly what it is, okay? You're out here blaspheming the name of God. But you are alive and well today. You're breathing. It's God giving you an opportunity so that you should come to repentance. But you're so arrogant and so prideful that you don't even want to hear. I've been called worse by better. The issue is she has told you that, she, that God planted her in my bedroom and planted her in my backyard. She has told you that she has seen no man in this house. And I need y'all to know that you don't know any of my personal business, nor am I going to share it today. But I need you to know that this woman carries a lying tongue. I need you to know that God has not planted this woman in my home, in my bedroom, in my backyard. I need you to know that this woman carries a lying tongue. She told you that I made up my marriage for the year of the bride fast. But the truth is, y'all don't know nothing about my marriage. Because I told you that God told me not to tell you. And thank God I obeyed the word of the Lord concerning my very private covenant. The woman said that I am an idol. That God told her that I was an idol. Here's the issue with that. Just real quick, okay? A marriage is not a... It's, 
It's not a private covenant the way she's applying it to be, okay? It, marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman for life. So if... <laughs> So, which means she has to stay in this quote-unquote covenant hidden. This marriage has to be hidden. It has to be hidden because marriage is for life. Okay? No, it's not. Okay? That's why people get married in public. Okay? In public. It's a public covenant. You're, you're getting married in front of people, right? You're making a covenant so people can see those people who attend the wedding. But why do we get so much a big deal about these people who are getting married? Be like, okay, you know, uh, you have the rainbow weddings, whatever. So you cannot go to those weddings, right? You are a witness to that. So who were the witnesses to this uh, covenant of um, Tiffany and her husband? At least we, if, any witnesses who can testify? Huh? Guys, like you, none of you attended my marriage. Okay, I'm, I'm married 15 years by the grace of God. That's it. You, okay? you don't have to know anything else about that. You, you, you don't have to hide it. I don't get it. I don't understand. So no, we, we're not buying it, Tiffany. You, we're not buying it. Okay, no, no, no. Stop lying. You, to me, I'm fine with her. She can be saying all these things. But the issue comes every time she says these things. She always says that God told her. God this, God daddy. That's the issue. You are, you are saying things about God that are not true. If you're just saying this is how you wrote Tiffany, I, I don't think anybody will, will care about that. It's just, okay, that's your business. But once you start invoking the name of God, that's the issue. And we're not going to stop. So we're calling you to repent. This woman has stolen my tagline for Covered by God, Building Bolder Believers. It's in her bio right now. She stole the tagline that God gave me for Covered by God. She's also stolen the majority of my prophetic words. If I am an idol, why did she steal my tagline for covered by God? And why has she stolen most of my prophetic words? If a demon gave me those words, if a demon gave me those taglines, if a demon told me to release the word of the Lord, why is she now copying every word of the Lord that I have given? Why has she stolen the tagline for covered by God if a demon gave it to me? She also lets you know that she was a plant inside a covered by God. She said it herself. You can quote her. And all of you still can't discern. I can't say all of you because some of y'all hear God and you've already commented in her comments and she's deleted all of your comments just like she's deleted mine. Let me leave you with these scriptures and I'm gonna let you go. But I wanted to release that word of the Lord over you. Oh shoot, my phone is super hot. So it just died. Okay, so that is also the word of the Lord. It is not, okay? It is true, okay? I think she is correct. Uh, Joanne Gabriel... She has uh, copied the playbook of Tiffany Montgomery's ministry, okay? I think she has definitely done that, for sure. She, was, she did testify that she was a plant in uh, Tiffany Montgomery's ministry. Okay, Joanne Gabriel, she's also a false prophetess herself. So she was spying on uh, Tiffany Montgomery's ministry. So she's gone out to have her own ministry that is exactly like Tiffany's, okay? So she's storing her playbook. So I do think that uh, Tiffany is very ticked off by that because, you know, she's a young girl and you can see that her ministry is growing. So I think Tiffany can see herself in Joanne Gabriel. That's why, because to me, it didn't make any sense. Like, okay, why are you so... Like, you know, you know, Tiffany, she's got a big platform. She's successful and everything. Joanne Gabriel, like, why would you care? Just carry on. But the fact that Tiffany is this concerned about Joanne Gabriel, I think she can see where she, that, that this young girl, her direction within these false ministries of their camp is, she's going in that right direction within that particular camp. So I can see that. Okay, so she's definitely bothered by it. <laughs> and yeah, and the young lady wasn't, uh, she was very bold. She came out very fierce. <laughs> so yes, the, the showdown of false prophets. Okay, we are here for it. We're going to laugh, but let's uh, finish up. I want you to go to Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 2 through 3. I want you to read that. And then I want you to read Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 6 through 8. I also want you to read Jeremiah 23, verses 30 through 32. That is the word of the Lord concerning this. I, my personal prayer is that you all learn how to test every spirit. Divine judgment has already been released over that young lady. I have tested the spirit 
as she is not operating out of a character flaw or out of immaturity in the body of Christ. This woman, excuse me, is operating out of a very strong Jezebelic spirit. And the spirit of Jezebel hates God's prophets. And the spirit of Jezebel wants to kill the influence of God's prophets. And the spirit of Jezebel wants to release demonic word curses over God's prophets. And here, many of you on this platform are stupid enough to come into agreement with a witch against God's prophets. Proverbs 17 verse 13 is the word of the Lord for you. If according to God, I have done good to the kingdom of God. If according to God, I am his daughter, I am his prophet. If according to God, I have done thus what saith the Lord. And you have called the good I've done in the kingdom of God evil. According to that word, evil will never leave your house. Divine judgment has been released over you. And what I plead for you to do is to today repent. Beg God to forgive you. Ask God to forgive you and renounce the judgments, renounce the evil covenants, renounce the agreements that you came into with this witch on this platform. That's all I have to say about it. I have nothing to say to her. God's judgment is released upon her, but I am more sheep conscious than I am anything else. And I know out of your own stupidity, because you all serve your own idols, you are deaf, dumb and blind. And I pray that this live stirs you up and allows you to see and discern that you all need to be careful who you come into agreement with in this hour. I think the falling of the fathers and the exposure that's going on in the body of Christ is letting you know that all of us need to be very careful. I pray that God shows you mercy and I pray, bless those that curse you. I bless you and I pray for you and I forgive you. And I want you to never forget that all of you are covered by God. And let me say one thing, God protects covered by God. Anybody puts their mouth on this ministry is in trouble with God. I want you to go and watch the last cover by God we did called prepare for war. There is a reason why these people want you to think I am false, but there is no message you can hear from me that you have not heard me tell you to repent. You have not heard me tear, tell you to tear down the high places. You have not heard me tell you to, to tear down your idols. And you have not heard me to tell you to turn your heart back to the father, which is God almighty. No false prophet is ever telling you to do that. I love you all to life and you have a good one. Okay. So after she pronounced curses and judgments, then, um, hold on. Hold on, guys. So, um, after Tiffany has pronounced curses and judgment, then in the end, she says, okay, she's forgiven, but like judgment is upon you on your house, divine judgment, whatever else she's calling. Okay, no, no, no. We have examined, um, you know, Celestial, what's her name? Uh, Joanne Gabriel. Okay, so this, all, all these false prophets are fighting amongst each other. Okay, so they, you know, that's their fight, whatever they're doing. The issue they're having, all of them, every one of them is telling us, the audience, that God told them. Okay, so uh, John Gabriel is calling Tiffany that she's a witch, that she has a, a Jezebel spirit. And Tiffany is saying the same thing about it. So who is telling the truth? Which is which? Right. That's why. We are just going to look at the scriptures. That's just about it. So we're going to go by whatever the scripture is saying. Okay. We're going to go by the scripture saying, if we are wrong, correct us according to the scriptures, not to what you, uh, to what you think. Okay. So we could care less about Celestial and the, and the, uh, and the other one. Like, no, they are all fair game. Anybody who claims that they are a prophetess and they are not a prophetess, there is an issue. Absolutely an issue. So it looks like uh, this a war between uh, the prophetess. You have people who are in celestial camp, people who are in uh, Tiffany Montgomery's camp, and, you know, their minions, whatever, there's battle going on. So there was another lady, Oxe, who also put out her message to, uh, to Tiffany. And there's people who used to follow her. I mean, there's just a lot. So, but let's just listen in to what this uh, lady has to say. I'm not familiar about uh, with her, but we can take a listen and make a, a short commentary. Here we go. Thank you guys for being here, okay? We'll play this and then we'll take a look at the comments. Because you can just be in error where someone tells you and prophesies to you, you're a prophet, and you believe it. And you don't sit with the Lord to confirm it. You just go. You're in error. God can forgive that. But when you then begin to say, thus saith the Lord, God told me to tell you this and God didn't give you a single word, you have entered into a new level of false prophetess. And God is very clear about how he feels when people say, thus saith the Lord, where God did not say. Sister Tiffany, please repent. Initially, I was not going to make this. I wasn't even going to bring it up, but because God showed me another man and I had not shared those messages, 
the same day he gave me this message is when he gave me the message for the other brother. And so God brought this to my foresight. I'd completely forgotten about it. I'm not here to castigate. And quite frankly, I'm not here to tap in into any nonsense of the prophets are fighting. I don't fight with nobody. Sister Celestial ain't fighting with nobody. True prophets ain't fighting with nobody outside of the enemy that is deceiving the world. And we fight in our prayer closets. I say this as a sister in Christ, the same way I said it last time in December. Sister Tiffany, please repent. This is not the time to flex muscles. This is not the time to double down. And I get it when people correct you, be it privately or publicly, it can be hard to take. It can be hard to take when someone who does not know you from anywhere comes and they're telling you, the Lord show me this. It can, it can rile emotions in you. But my imploration towards you is, after you finish having those emotions of anger and indignation, you sit with it. Cry if you need to. God, I don't know this woman. I don't know these people. Who are they to talk to? After you finish getting all that out your system, sit with the Lord and ask him, Lord, but is there any truth to it though? Empty yourself, truly humble yourself. It can be hard, but you can do it. You can do it. Through Christ, all things are possible. Humble yourself and just ask the Lord, God, sincerely, is there truth to this? God doesn't want you to perish. God doesn't want you to perish. And Sister Celestia is a true woman of God and she's giving you this message. Please listen. Please don't harden your heart. Please don't double down. Please don't start to insult the person that God has brought to warn you. Please don't. Please repent, Sister Tiffany. It does not have to be this way. You do not have to go towards the way you are going. Please test the spirit by the spirit so that the Lord can confirm these messages. This is the third one, so that the Lord can confirm these messages to you. The second person that the Lord showed me. Do you see what I am talking about, guys? So, this is another, uh, uh, I don't know if she calls herself prophetess. I'm not familiar about her. But she's also come out and called out Tiffany to repent. According to her testimony, God told her to bring this message to Tiffany. <laughs> and she's not the only one, guys. There is another one as well, okay? So what is the point? The things that she had said, right? Like, okay, you know, uh, you know, the pride, Tiffany repent, uh, stop doing these things, right? She said some good things there that is just like, okay, yes, 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 right? Like if you say that says the Lord and the God did not say that, you cannot do that, right? That's actually true. And she says also what you have to test the spirit. That's actually true. Okay. Remember, Tiffany also told us to test the spirit, right? So you can see all these people are bringing in their nuggets. Okay. The stuff that they are taking out from the scriptures, but we are sitting over here and listening. And the question will be like, okay, which is which? Because we serve the God, a God of no confusion at all, a God of order. Okay, and she's out here calling that celestial that she's a woman of God. <laughs> and Tiffany says that she's an apple on God's eye. <laughs> Do you see where all this thing is going? So, all in all, you can actually, if you are not versed with the scriptures, you are going to be swept by every wind of doctrine. Because people, you know, like, you know, she's not flashy. I think she doesn't know even Tiffany. She's out there. Just please repent. We're wishing you just normal things, right? You can listen to, but this is what's, uh, this is what's happening. So it looks like the showdown is definitely on. It's definitely on. But there has been people that I didn't even know before who have come out out of their woodworks, who profess to be prophetess, are calling out Tiffany left and right. So... You know, if I was in Tiffany's camp, if I was Tiffany, I'd be like, you know, maybe there's got to be something over here. Why are my, my, my fellow prophetesses coming out after me instead of us banding together? There's got to be something there at the bare minimum, at the bare minimum. But Tiffany, <laughs> oh, man, you can't make this stuff up, guys. But there it is. Test the speed by the scriptures. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Victoria, good to see you, sister. Man, I love spoke makes them feel. <laughs> You're all, oh, uh, sister Sheila, I forgot I should have brought my my covering. <laughs> we, 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 are, we, 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 we are wasting our time over here, okay? We need to, to tap into this thing, okay? <laughs> 
oh man, this is um, this is the situation where we where we have over here. Okay, so let's take a look at this scripture before we continue. Okay, so Matthew seven sixteen. Okay. Uh, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. In what are ravenous wolves? You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from the thorn, uh, thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every heather tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A heather tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit, it is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Okay. So, uh, this is, you know, we, we, are, we are to be uh, fruit inspectors, okay? And once again, according to the scriptures, you see? According to the scriptures. So, you know, you can say all these things, but the way you handle yourself, the way you are, you are misapplying the scripture, okay? You are twisting the scriptures. So already, we've already looked at that and test like, no, no, no. You see, this is not it, Okay. Because we know uh, the, uh, the, uh, the devil discusses himself what as an angel of light. Why? Because if it's light, like, you know, it's, it's there to deceive you. Okay. What, what do you think happened to Eve? She was out there. She had everything. Okay. Nothing to worry about, you know. And the devil just came in. Did God really say? Just like that. Just a little bit of doubt in there. And then Eve was out there wondering, you know, this, that, and the third. And now here we are. Uh -huh. Here we are because of what uh, uh, Lady Eve ended up doing. So this is uh, what, what, what we're having. What are you guys saying? Okay, let's take a look at the chat before we continue. I guess true biblical teaching straight from the word is not enough. They have to go, of course, it's not enough. If it was enough, wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't be, this wouldn't be an issue. Okay, so because everybody, instead of them just saying, according to this particular scripture, is this right? But everybody's coming in, they had a dream. God told them this, that, and the third. So, okay, you know, like you, you guys are contradicting yourself. God cannot contradict himself. You all need to be on one accord, okay? <laughs> so, hey, it's a lot. Oh, what are they? I love spook. It makes the... <laughs> Oh, you guys are funny. There is so much confusion within those come. Yes. And confusion is actually a sign of judgment. Okay? Confusion is a sign of judgment. So they need to all be repenting sackcloth and ashes. None of these people are prophetesses and maybe not born again. I mean, you're, you're lying on the word of God. Okay? You've crowned you. Who called you to be a prophet, by the way? Okay? They are pronouncing themselves as prophetesses, left and right. Okay? There are no women prophetesses, okay? So the prophets and the apostles were there to lay the foundation. So the foundation is already laid. There's no need to be laying another foundation of something that the building that has already been established, okay? Right now, the building is just growing, right? The church of Christ is just growing. That's all. That's all is happening. That's all is happening. Where the covering is a biblical... Oh, 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 Yes, you know, I'm not going to fight you uh, with you or that one, okay? Like, yeah, there's, you know, people disagree. There's nothing wrong. I have no problem with women covering, okay? If, you know, it is in the scriptures over there. Women cover themselves and stuff. But on this one is, you know, th there was a joke that people were making. Like, yeah, no, nothing wrong with that. When they're covering is biblical, they're like, yeah, people do cover. These people go to church, uh, women, they, you know, they cover their hair, okay? I think it's appropriate. I, I have no problem with uh, women who cover, okay? I have friends who go to church and they and they cover their hair. It's, it's absolutely fine. There's nothing there. Uh, why are we mocking that? No, nobody was mocking that. Nobody's mocking the covering, okay? That's, that, that's not what it is, Martin, no. There's nothing wrong with women covering. There was, you know, there was a, a, a joke. It wasn't mocking. It wasn't a mock at all. It wasn't a mock. There's nothing wrong. People want to cover their hair. Absolutely. My thing is just like, okay, if you're going to cover your hair, you need to cover your hair. If I can see your, your hair, you know, to me, you're not covered. But, you know, people can disagree with that. But there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, uh, I agree. Love agenda would be regarded sisters. Okay. All right. Let's go. Uh, we should not be mocking women covering their heads when they prophesy it is biblical. No, Martin. Uh, that's not what's happening. Okay, that's absolutely, that's not what's happening. 
Okay, it is uh it is better to dwell in a corner of a hostel than <laughs> a quarrelsome what are they? Yes, proverbs for sure. <laughs> yes, but not sure if they're doing it for baby cruise. Ah, uh, well, who knows, you know? Yeah, it's fine. We have no problem uh, uh, women covering, okay? So that's not, you know, uh, we're not going to bring a discord because uh, people are covering. No, that's not the issue. The issue is women calling themselves prophet and saying God told them something that God clearly did not say. So they are lying on God. They are blaspheming the name of God. That's the issue. So Tiffany Montgomery has put out an APB calling out the entire body of Christ to come out in defense of Tiffany. Okay. So to me, I'm like, no, no, you don't even have to be calling anybody. Okay. If God is on your side, if what you're doing is of the Lord, the Lord will see to it. The Lord will take care of it. You don't need uh, anybody else. But she put out her call. So let's uh, listen in real quick. Here we every single month for about five or six years now and we turn down our plates we fast and we pray and we contend for god we kill our flesh and we tear down idols in our lives every high thing in our bloodlines and we just have turned an adulterous nation back to god um, if you would like to join our fast or come to our in-person monthly meetings please go to www.coveredbygod.co again that is www.coveredbygod.co and enter your name and email address and we will get you in make sure you check your spam folder because sometimes the emails land there let me go ahead and get started for those of you that are watching this live right now i want you to share this live with anybody that you know is in the body of christ anybody that you know is a pastor a teacher an evangelist a prophet or an apostle anybody in the body of christ that are just sheep that sit in the pews and think that none of this uh, 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 pertains to them i need you to send this live out to everybody send this live out to everybody it doesn't matter if you live in these united states of america nigeria ghana India, Dubai, Pakistan, England, Switzerland, Australia. I don't care where you live. This live is for the entire body of Christ. Over the last few months, there has been an increase of videos all over YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook calling me a false prophet. The truth is I never responded to any of them because I thought that all of this was just, was just about me and it didn't bother me. Um, God has allowed me to set my face like a flint. So things that bother normal people just simply roll off of my back. Uh, similar to how God took his sheep as a shepherd. Now, I don't know if, you ever, if any of you have ever seen the analogy when God has anointed sheep or the shepherd anointed sheep, it literally is to stop the bugs and the gnats from irritating the ears and the eyes of the sheep and the anointing or in other words the oil allows the bugs to completely roll off of them because of that god has anointed me and i am able to allow things to roll off of me and you know due to that i just wasn't bothered by what anybody said however the lord revealed to me something and he said tiffany do not think what you're seeing is flesh and blood he said this is not about you for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but we wrestle against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places i'm going to say that again he said the lord of the lord of hosts said tiffany do not think that this is about you. He said, for what you're seeing is not flesh and blood, but you are wrestling against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Lord let me know that none of this was about me. Okay, so once again, here she is, right? According to her, this is what God told her, right? So when did God told her? We have no idea, okay? So she's just invoking because this is what she has received and what she says is that she's been, uh, God anointed her. So when did this anointing, uh, to, where did this anointing took place? We have no idea, okay? The scripture that she's quoting, we already have that in scripture, okay? That's Ephesians 6, okay? That applies to believers. If you are a Christian, we are in a warfare, we are in a battlefield, and yes, those evil places, they're, all, they're existing right now, okay? The devil is out there seeking someone to devour, roaring around like a lion seeking someone to devour. So what she's, she's telling us, like, okay, hello, there's nothing special about that, Tiffany. So for you to come out to say that, okay, you, you got this special message from God, it's not true. Because what you just said, we already have that in scripture, okay? All she could have just done. Just called Ephesians 6, maybe. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what she's doing. So she is receiving this no revelation, special revelation, especially uh, tailored for her. And yet the scripture is actually crystal clear. All who desire to live godly lives will be persecuted. Persecution is part of Christian life. 
So why can she be out here and just be like, okay, this is what it means to be a Christian. Okay. So let me gird up my lawyers and just press on. Let, if God is fighting your battles, so be it. Let it be. But if you're out here pushing back, calling out people in Nigeria and Ghana, you know, putting out the APP, everybody else should come out here and defend Tiffany against who? Against who? Against who? Huh? Who? And it says like, oh, people who are doing all the all videos, whatever, you know, this is the internet. It is the public square. Tiffany does her videos on internet, doesn't she? Yes, she does. There's nothing wrong with that. So the issue is, what is it that these people are saying about you? Is it true? Because you are telling us out here, okay, you know, all of you, you are in the same, you are in the same camp. So we are out here just wondering like, okay, which, you know, who, who, who which one, which, which one is going to come out on top? <laughs> or is it going to be Celestial? Is it going to be Tiffany? Is it going to be Joan Gabriel? Who? So, because all of you, you are out here telling us that God said this, God said that, like, which is it? So you are the one who is bringing a discord. You are the one who is bringing a confusion. So we are calling all of you to repent and to stop it. You need to cut it out. You are causing other people to stumble because you are saying things that are not true. That's what we are saying out here. And, you know, it's very, <laughs> the idea that we, I, I don't know. Does she even go to church? I very much wonder. I don't know if she is a member of a local church. I don't know. But with what I'm seeing, with what I'm hearing, those are the things that are sound similar for people who are, if they are in a church, is not a solid doctrine church. Or they don't go to church because they are the ones who think that they are the church themselves. So I'm very, um, yeah. Hey, someone cut me off with buggy today. I will make a video and inform them. <laughs> yes, Rob. Like, you know, the, the entire body of Christ. <laughs> Oh, man, the la, you know, uh, absolutely. That confirmed the topic of the year. La, she reacts to everything. Yeah. So, no, you know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody's dealing with things, okay? Like, people are being persecuted out there. The church in Iran, the church in China, okay? The church in the Middle East, okay? You don't hear any of them making out videos or calling the entire church. Hey, come out here and defend us. Hey, they're just out there. Please keep praying for us, Okay. Keep praying for us. But Tiffany wants us to come out. <laughs> we don't defend false teachers. <laughs> we expose the deeds of darkness. Okay. No, oh, man. She's creating a division. How does that be a brick I don't know. I don't know, Thrifted Treasure. This might sound odd, but think uh, we are doing Berean babies more prophetic because you are sharing and warning people what the Lord is. Like, yeah, like, you know, we just going to foretelling the word of God, right? God has already spoken. Okay. Yeah. You know, forth telling what the God, God has already said, not something new. Okay. Yeah. Scripture, baby. Okay. Oh, scripture. So uh, let's listen in to some more to the calling. Tiffany has put out a call. <laughs> entire body of Christ. I've come to you today to warn the entire body of Christ that if you do not wake up out of your spiritual slumber, you are next. The Lord told me to take all of you to Esther chapter four, and we're going to read a few verses. I'm going to read specifically out of the Amplified verse, starting at verse 13, verse 14. Then Mordecai told them to return this answer to Esther. Now Esther, who is verse 13, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm going to say that again. He said, the Lord of the Lord of hosts said, Tiffany, do not think that this is about you. He said, for what you're seeing is not flesh and blood, but you are wrestling against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Lord let me know that none of this was about me. All of this was about the entire body of Christ. I've come to you today to warn the entire body of Christ that if you do not wake up out of your spiritual slumber, you are next. The Lord told me to take all of you to Esther chapter four, and we're going to read a few verses. I'm going to read specifically out of the Amplified verse, starting at verse 13, verse 14. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry, uh, Amplified Bible, uh, you know. So according to Tiffany, this is the warning that she needs to put out to the entire body of Christ. Okay, she's not talking about the local church. She's not talking about whatever location that she lives in, the entire body of Christ. So she's talking about the global church. So this message has to go out to the global church. 
Guys, so help me out here. Right now, uh, how are people, because this is the message from God, right? That it must go to the entire global church, okay? So, the people who are in, I'll give a, the people who are in Malawi, okay? In Africa, they don't have uh, internet, they don't have phone. How are they going to hear this message from Tiffany? Because if God has sent this message, that it has to go to the, to the entire body of Christ. So how is Tiffany planning to bring this message to people who are in places where they don't have the internet? You guys help me out here. Huh? What plan does she have to get this message? Because this is what God has given her. So she should make sure that this message has to reach those people. So I know that's not the message that she's received from God. That's number And number two, God already, uh, the, the church of Christ is going to prevail. Okay? Uh, Jesus Christ is the head of the church. That's why if you're serving in the church, you are a pastor, you are an under shepherd. You are serving Christ. You are serving the body of Christ. Okay? It's pure without blemish. That is the bride of Christ. So, uh, within that, there are people who are going to come in, want to bring in these false teachings, these heresies. Those are need to be purged the evil among you. They are to be exposed so that the rest may know and see. Because if you keep quiet, you don't say anything about it, then people are just going to cause it up, not knowing, right? There's people who are not mature in their faith. There's people who are young in the faith. There's people who are being deceived. There are people who are ignorant. All those things are going to happen. But if you're in Christ, you're walking, right? You are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our God and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by being immersed in the word, in the scriptures. So for Tiffany to come out, to tell us that God has told her that she needs to put out this message to the global church, to the entire body, I want to know when she has finished giving this message to people who, who, who have no cell phones, who have no internet, who don't even know Tiffany, how is she planning to reach that message? That's how I know whatever she's saying is not of God. Why? Because we already know, right? God has already spoken. We already have his word. That's why people are working day and night to translate the word of God into people's local languages. Even up to date, there's people who have never heard the gospel. Up to date, there's people who, ha who are still, uh, they're still translating the scriptures so people can have access to the word of God so they can see and hear God through the scriptures with their own, uh, in their own languages. So why is God doing all that if Tiffany is out here going to bring out the word to the entire global church? Then what is the point of the scriptures? What is the point of people going out to be preaching out in these places? Do you see what I'm saying, guys? If Tiffany, she's the one who has to bring out this message to the, to the entire global church. I know Tiffany is not going to live forever. So what happens if Tiffany is no longer here? How are those people going to hear the word? Because this message has been given exclusively to Tiffany because she's the one who has been anointed. Do you, see, do you understand what I'm saying to you guys? That's why the word of God is already here. It was already here when Jesus walked on uh, the streets of Nazareth. You see what I'm saying? That's why the word of God, you know, it's, it's the word of God. It will never expire. It's eternal. It's the word of God. So people have come and go. Civilizations have come and go. But the word of God remains forever. Okay, the glass is, the glass is going to wither. Okay, the flowers are going to die. They're going to fade, but the word of God remains forever. So, but Tiffany is out here telling us that she has just replaced the scriptures. If you take what she's saying to its logical conclusion, that's why this, these people are very dangerous because people are not glued to their scriptures. They are glued to Tiffany. What else is Tiffany going to tell me today? What else is God telling Tiffany today? So, every, so now you're just moving. You're here. You're here, you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here. Meantime, she's just telling you, test the spirit. We are testing you right now, Tiffany. The things that you're saying, we are testing you according to the word of God. And what you're saying is very much untrue. Very much untrue. So you, you, you need to repent. Just say whatever. This, this is just my opinion. It's fine. You know, nobody will worry about that. But you, you be saying, God told you. God told you. That the entire body of Christ needs to come together and defend Tiffany Montgomery. 
What are you guys saying? I know I've been all over the place over here. I cannot even believe it. Oh, look at that. Arizona Tea. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what happened? The accent I went back to the beginning of the live and missed almost 15 minutes. Oh, I guess that's why you were a little bit fine. That's fine, my teen. Enjoy. Okay, I'm so glad that you're here. Okay? No, we are fine. We are, we are fine over here. Absolutely. We appreciate you for being here. All right. Oh, Sister Adrienne, you're here. Good to see you. So many people don't even know or understand the written word. Yet somehow I'm supposed to believe that God is speaking to them. Exactly. Not only that, everybody's been summoned. If you're a believer in Christ, you have been summoned by Tiffany. And if you don't obey what Tiffany has said, guess what? By default, you're disobeying God. Because according to Tiffany, God told her to bring this message to the entire body. So if we don't adhere to what Tiffany is telling us, we have found ourselves in disobedience. So we're going to give an account to that. You see where this thing is going? But now, meantime, and the, the other prophetess are also telling us the same thing. So which is it? There's so much confusion. There's so much confusion. So we're going to hear she's going to take us to the book of Esther. <laughs> I believe we do uh, I believe we do have end time prophets. But where are the credentials? I want to see the ministry of Jesus Christ from any self-proclaimed prophet. Well, so far what we have, uh, you know, all we are saying, if whatever people are saying it is true, just, it should just be according to the word of God. If whatever people are doing, it's in contradiction with the word of God. The scripture says we are not to fear such prophet. We are not to fear such prophet. Oh, Lady Sheila goes to bed so early. Ah, huh? Sister Sheila, good night. <laughs> so early, so early. All right. So let's listen in to some to, to Epi B that's been been called out. <laughs> Guys, get ready. You better show up over here. Reporting for duty to Tiffany Montgomery. <laughs> I told them to return this answer to Esther. Now, Esther, who is now the queen, thinks that the plot to kill all of the Jews no longer applies to her because she is safe and set up. Mordecai, who lives with the common people, have sent her a warning and she responds back saying, listen, anybody that goes to the king will die because he has to extend the golden scepter in order for him to receive me. He has not done that in 30 days. If I go to him without that, I will die. Mordecai lets her know you will die anyway because don't let you think that you are safe. You're a Jew. All of you that think that you can hide in your homes and you can hide in your churches and you can hide in your pews and they're only coming after me, I need you to know that this is not a flesh and blood war. These few people that you see coming after me are calling me a false prophet. It is a spirit. And if the body of Christ allows this to continue, if, a body of, if the body of Christ tolerates the voices of sorceresses and diviners, the body of Christ is in trouble. And the Lord told me to tell you that you are next. Esther chapter four, verses 13 through 14, I'm reading out of the Amplified. Then Mordecai told them to return this answer to Esther. Don't flatter yourself yourself that you will escape the king's palace any more than any of us will for if you keep silent at this time relief and deliverance will arise for the jews from somewhere else i'm gonna be saved no matter what but you and your father's house you will perish and who knows but that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this and for this very occasion in the message bible it reads don't think just because you live in the king's house you're one of the jews that will get who get out of this alive if you persist in staying silent in a time like this help and deliverance will arrive for the jews from other for, for some other place but if you but you and your family will be wiped out who knows maybe you were made queen for such a time as this i will say this before i continue the lord said that we were in a spiritual slumber that we are supposed to be waking up it doesn't matter how much you don't like me. It doesn't matter how much you don't like my brash delivery. It doesn't matter how much I, uh, my, my, my appearance disdains you. None of that matters if we all belong to the same kingdom. You are allowing the idol of your flesh, the idol of your opinions, and the idol of your feelings to make you partner up with people in divination. So you see what she has done, okay? So right now, Tiffany... She has put herself to be uh, Queen Esther in the scriptures. So God has called her for times such as this. I mean, I don't even believe that we even have to be addressing this. No, no, no. Tiffany, you're not Esther, okay? This, this is the problem when you are putting yourself in the scriptures, okay? 
Like it's the, the book of Esther is telling you the history of what happened to God's people. Okay. And God is not mentioned in the book of Esther, but God's providence is everywhere lit and right. Okay. Why? So that when you read the scriptures, like these people were in a predicament, but God provided a way for them and rescued his people in keeping his promises that he, he, he gave a promise to Abraham. These people were there, they were in exile. So that story is talking about the Jewish people. It's not talking about people here now in America. Absolutely not. You can read the story and see God working and you can trust and believe that the same God who was able to do these things, the same God that we are praying to today, is the same God that we are serving today. So Tiffany has just, to be quite honest, this is she has just slandered the bride of Christ. Because right now, if nobody comes to her rescue, okay, you are a problem. And not only that, she's saying like, okay, people are defending uh, witches and witchcraft. Who is defending the, the witches out here? Who is defending the witches out here? Huh? I mean, like, why would you even do that? So this is the battle that they have amongst themselves. Okay. And the issue is they are lying that God is the one who is behind all this. We know God is not behind all this. So she can use threatening words that, oh, people who are calling me as the false prophet judgment is going to come on you. No, 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 no. The scripture is calling you, Tiffany, that you are a false prophetess. We are just, you know, amening to that. And yes, you are actually a false prophetess. You might think that you are, but you're not. According to the scripture, you do not pass a test of what it means to be a prophet, let alone a prophetess. So, yeah. So take that up with the person who wrote the scriptures, right? The Holy Spirit himself. So, no. So, and to my knowledge, like, you know, it hasn't been about, you know, nothing about personal issues as far as Stephen is concerned, right? It's all the things that she has said, the things that she has put out publicly. That's it. Is Those are the things, okay? Uh, uh, you know. To, with everything that I've also heard, it's just people talking about her ministry. Nothing in terms of her, her personal issues. I have no idea what her personal issues are. But she does have a foul mouth, okay, as a matter of public record, in contradiction to the scriptures, let alone a prophetess. She's out here charging exuberant prices, okay? Be like, ah, I don't know about that. So, no, Tif uh, Tiffany, you will not stop the work of the Lord, Okay. Your threats are not going to, there's nothing that they're going to do, okay? They, they will always be false, uh, false teachers, false prophets. Those, they, they need to be exposed. They, they, the works of darkness, they need to be exposed. That's, that's it. They're going to say things, disguise themselves as an angel of light, but they're not, right? They're leading so many people astray. So it should not be. It should not be. So we're going to go by the script. Even everything, even for me, whatever else, whatever I'm saying, it has to be, you know, tested by the scripture.